So the cost of this was literally 4.2% of what that was. Yeah. $6 as the, opposed to $140. Hello, YouTube family. Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we have a real treat for you guys. My son-in-law, Chris's best friend, Eli, has learned how to make Kydex holsters. On today's video, Eli is going to show us how to make them. I'm Jerry, and I'm living the Newcomb life. Hello everyone, I'm Eli. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my custom Kydex holsters. Right here we can see my EDC rig. I have a Glock 43 MOS with a flashlight on it and I have my plus one mag attached to it. Go ahead and remove my magazine. Remove my weapon from my holster. Verify that it's clear. Nothing in the mag. Here we can see the holster. I have a 3D printed claw on it to reduce printing. I have two 3D printed belt clips. I fastened the holster itself together with machine bolts. And I bonded the two holsters together with some shock cord. This helps maintain uh, flexibility and helps it conform to your body to also reduce printing. On the back side here, still shock cord and you can also see the cord lock. This also helps push the holster out a little bit to reduce printing and uh, maintain flexibility as well as securing the cord. So step one of this process is preparation of the firearm. Whenever you're working with your firearm, you always want to main, make sure that it is clear and safe to work with. I never work with a magazine in my pistol just to make sure that it's safe. Now that I know it's clear, I'll go ahead and load it into the position that it'll be loaded into the holster, which means uh, slide forward. So. At this point, you're gonna need some masking tape. You're gonna need an X-Acto knife. I always use a square edge because I can't cut straight lines. I would highly recommend the same to you. Here I have a 12 by 12 sheet of Kydex. I have the 0 .08 thickness uh, with a P1 texture. And I have my spacer blocks. I've cut these out of aluminum. Um, I literally just drew up the dimensions I wanted on a piece of printer paper, traced it, and cut it out with a jigsaw. As far as hardware goes, these are going to be my belt clips. Uh, these are different than the ones that are on my holster right now. Uh, that is because I just recently designed these and will be putting these on my, my old, old holster to use in my everyday carry. As far as uh, other equipment to use, this will be a rod for the sight post on the firearm. This will help uh, make sure that your front sight post can clear without scratching the inside of your Kydex holster and it'll make it easier to draw. And uh, 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 other hardware is your claw. Uh, you saw the claw on my old one. This is a smaller claw for the smaller firearm and this will also help to reduce printing. So we'll go ahead and start off by putting down five layers of masking tape on the slide. And you may ask, why do you need five layers? Can I do three? Can I do four? Can I do seven? Um, I found that the sweet spot is five. Uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna help reduce friction on the slide to go for a more consistent pull whenever you need it. Um, I've done three because I thought that three would be a tighter fit, which means better, but um, five is what I found to be consistently what is the best for all the stuff that I've done. I, I encourage you to experiment though. So to start off, we're gonna line up our firearm. We're gonna take out a couple strips of tape. We're gonna line them just along the slide. So it's important that your tape is uh, considered one layer, so you're gonna really want it to stick to itself. Um, it, it won't be moved during the process of actually uh, molding the Kydex to it. This is to help uh, keep the pistol safe. You don't wanna scratch up your gun, and it'll also help to make that space. So now that I'm done with the right side of the pistol, I'm actually gonna be working on the top side now with the sight spacer here. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take a piece of tape, 
that is uh, about three quarters the length of it. Make sure it's nice and square because I can't make straight tape uh, tears. You're gonna line up the piece of tape on the top of the uh, sight spacer, just like this. I'm gonna make sure that the tape actually goes all the way down the side of it. So that way, whenever you do end up putting this on the pistol, it doesn't shift. So what I like to do is I like to peel it back just a little bit. Then on the top of the firearm, I will just put the front of the spacer, butt it right up against the sight, and then stick it down. After you have that stuck down, you're going to take your five players and you're just going to stick it over the top of that one. You're going to try to join it up with that sight just to help secure it down a little bit. And then we'll move on to the other side. All right. Rinse and repeat. Five layers of tape. Again, once you get your five layers of tape on, you're going to conform it to the outside of the pistol best you can. So I, again, I am just pushing the top of the tape up right against that sight spacer. So once I get it to a space that I like it, here I've got a box cutter. I'm just going to trim away the excess. That'll kind of make things uh, easier to work with and so that way you're not tripping over your own fingers here. Do be careful, sharp blade, uh, expensive weapon, don't scratch your gun, uh, always know where you're cutting on the back side. So once you're done with that, all those processes, you should have something that looks similar to this. All right, so now, uh, everybody knows on the side of your weapon you have a slide release, you have, uh, sometimes you have a safety, and this is where your blocking will come in, all right? So this is what I was talking about with this square aluminum block here. So what I do when I'm doing this is when you think about a holster, you slide it in and you slide it out. If you have a bump on a straight surface, it's going to cause uh, tension where you don't want it, and it's going to hold your pistol in. It'll, For one, it'll scratch up your, the inside of your holster, creating plastic shards which can get into your slide, it'll gum up your slide, you don't want none of that. Then it'll also scratch up your pistol on the points that are causing friction. While it is metal, and that's plastic, it will leave marks, so it's best to always put a block in. I put it, I, I bump it up right behind where those points are. Like that. So my slide release is right here. The end of the slide release is right on the edge of this block. So all I'm gonna do now, Take a very small piece of tape like this, stick it on top of the block, stick it on the pistol. It's it's nothing too crazy. You just don't want to be able to move it with your finger more than uh, about a quarter of an inch. You know, keep things uh, as accurate as possible. It's just like that. So now that I have my final product here that I'm going to be forming on, um, I need to start thinking ahead as to what hardware I want to use. So that would be uh, my belt clips and my claw. So this will be a right-handed carry. So this will, the, the left side of the pistol will be up against your body, right there. I'm gonna be placing one of the belt uh, clips since there's no flashlight on this weapon. I'm gonna be placing one of the holes right in front of the trigger guard and I'll be placing the other belt clip even with that on the left side. Right next to my belt clip, I'm going to be placing my claw up even with that, just like that. So luckily for us, that means that we're not going to need any extra plastic because it is still pretty much in line with about where the machine bolts would already be going. So here I have a 12 by 12 sheet of Kydex. It is 0 0.08 millimeters thick. Um, there are three different variations. You can get the 0 0.08, the 0 0.06, or the 0.93. I find that this is a happy medium ground for concealed carry. It gives it the flexibility, not a lot of weight, and it makes it a lot more comfortable. So, lining this pistol up, we can see that we have clearance from the end of the barrel to the pl plastic, and we have just about even with the back of the grip 
to the back of the plastic. In order to give yourself enough room for uh, hardware, machine bolts, all of that, I find that about a, a thumb, from the tip of your thumb to your knuckle, is about the correct spacing. So I take my thumb, I line it up just like that, I push the pistol over from the edge of the plastic, just like that. Then on the other side, I do the same thing. When you're doing this, you're leaving enough room for machine bolts, and you're leaving enough room for the paracord wrap to attach to your plus one mag. If you're not doing that, you just leave it just like this, and then whenever you finalize the product, you can shave it away. But just like that, boom, I'm gonna take a speed square here. I'm gonna square it up with right about where I thought it was. We're gonna move our weapon out of the way, and we're gonna grab our box cutter. Your first cut is gonna be light. You're giving yourself some guiding lines for the next couple of cuts. Your second cut's gonna be a little more medium. And your third cut's gonna be your deepest cut. This will finalize the cut. Just like that. So now that that cuts in the plastic, all you have to do is bend it. Now that you see the white, all you have to do is snap it in the other direction. And it breaks. This is a good square right here. So with this square, since it's gonna be a two-part mold, we can take it to another piece of plastic and simply match it so that it outlines correctly. But after that, now we have two identical pieces of plastic that we're gonna be making our two-part mold for. So now that you've completed your pistol, we're gonna move on to the magazine. So the magazine is much, much simpler. You're gonna do the same procedure, but instead of five, as we did for the slide, you're only gonna do three layers of tape. So you're only gonna be doing three layers of tape because unlike the pistol, um, the magazine doesn't have as much surface area. And while it does have retention points, like where the mag catch will find it, that is, the only retention point it has, so you would like the Kydex to be a little more snug to the magazine. It'll help keep it in its spot. So with the magazine here, um, since I've been 3D printing everything else, it's always a good idea to have a round in your magazine, but you don't want a live round. So if you have, uh, for instance, snap caps, uh, some sort of dummy round to put in the magazine. It'll help with spacing. In this case, I have a 3D printed 9mm that I stick into mine. And the thing that's important to know about the magazine is it does not have to be perfect. You, the only the main parts that you have to worry about are the sides because that's where the retention point is and that's where you want it to be uh, flexible enough to hold it but still let it go. So I only have the the, tip, the three pieces on each side and you'll see that they don't meet in the back and that's not a problem. That will secure it this way while the tape is securing it this way. It'll keep it locked in a lot better. and. On the end here, the end isn't going to be molded in plastic, so trim it up so that way it's easy to work with, but by no means does it have to be perfect. So let's talk about some equipment really quickly. Uh, here I have my foam press. This is what you're going to be putting in your hot kydex with your mold in. Um, the idea behind this is you have two layers of foam, uh, high density foam, that will conform around the pistol and give it pressure so that way the hot kydex will um, it's, it'll still be malleable enough to mold correctly. So here, I made this one myself, and it just goes to show you don't need the most professional equipment to do everything you do. This is from the as-is section of Ikea. It was a shelf. It's just some, uh, some plywood of some kind. I went and bought these hinges from Home Depot. It was like six bucks for the three of them. And I screwed it into the back. I uh, contact cemented the uh, the main layers of foam onto the board and I have these extras just for additional compression. So it's important to make sure that there's no very large debris on these. You don't want uh, big chunks of plastic or anything like that on there. It will show up in your mold. It's important to keep these clean. Um, and another important part of this is your setup. 
So I don't want this too high because when I press down on it, then I'll have to be way up here to compress it. I don't want it too low because then I'll be bent over and I won't be able to put my clamps on it. So that's the other part of this mold is the clamps. Once I have my hot plastic in there, I'll be taking these clamps, the hot plastic goes in, I press this down, and then I put my clamps on here, and this will keep it compressed for the 10 minutes. And just like that, you get all the compression you need. There'll be two of them, one on each corner here. So this is just a run-of-the-mill toaster oven. Uh, there's nothing insanely special about it. Right now, we have it set between 250 and 300 degrees for the plastic. The plastic has been setting on top of it for just a couple of minutes, just to kind of get it preheated a little bit. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and throw the plastic in. We're gonna use our infrared temperature gun and we're gonna, we're gonna keep gauging it. Once it reaches 125 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna rotate it to ensure even heating. And then once it reaches about 250 to 275, that's the acceptable range to get it molded. We're gonna take it out, put down the first layer of plastic. We're gonna take our pistol here that we already have taped up, put it on top, take the second layer, put it on and compress it. And then we wait 10 minutes, so. So, so right now the Kydex is sitting at about 250 degrees. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in for a little longer because I know that this still feels a little stiff for what I usually work with that gives me good molds. So we might bump it up to about 265 and we'll leave it right around there. That's about as high as I'm willing to go before you start getting that plastic smell and all that other annoying stuff. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing myself. Uh, mentally checklist, okay, I have my mold, I have my plastic, I have my clamps on standby. I'm good to go. So, I'm gonna take the first player, layer out, shiny side up towards the gun. I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna place my weapon inside of it, give it a firm press, take my other piece of plastic, slap it on top, give it a firm press. Second, clamp it. Shiny side up. Pistol in there, square as you can get it. Give it a little press. Shiny side down in this case. Press. There you go. And then once you get your first clamp on, your second clamp shouldn't be near as difficult. And you just want to evenly press them down on the weapon. Just like that. It's been about 10 minutes. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop open the mold. After we pop it open, I'm gonna bring you through like a little inspection. I'm gonna point out what I think looks good about the mold, what I think looks bad about it, and kind of help you improve how to judge your own to see if you need to restart or perhaps even proceed on. So, pop off the clamp. Pop off the other clamp. And open it up. Okay, so off the bat, just first look, this looks pretty good. You can see the trigger well here, or the trigger guard rather. There is a slight indent here where the, uh, where the bullets eject from, or the casings rather. Um, you might see this and say, oh no, it's warped, it's not gonna look good. Personally, when I make these holsters, I cut off right here at the end of the barrel, so that will not be a problem. Um, you'll have to adjust for how you make your own holsters in the future. So that side, outstanding so far. I'm gonna flip it over. What do we see here? Okay, so here's where that slide release is and this is where my block is. You can see the outlines and how they flow together. So now when you insert the pistol into the uh, holster, your, your selector, your, your switches here aren't gonna get hung up on anything back here because all this plastic got moved out of the way. That's the point of these blocks. Sometimes it's best to see it instead of me explaining it. So this is what I was looking at and this is the point of failure for a lot of pistols when you don't do it correctly. So this looks good. Again, your uh, trigger guard looks good. There's no warping uh, that I see that would be counting this out. So 
I'm gonna call this one a success. After this, we're gonna go ahead and mold up our magazine. We already got it taped off. I have a suitable size piece of plastic for it. Throw it in the oven, rinse and repeat. So for my magazine here, uh, I'm gonna be doing it a little hotter than I did my pistol. With the pistol, you want kind of generalized shapes and in the high points, that's where you want your good retention. That's the point of melting the plastic up to where you did. But in comparison, I'm gonna be raising the temperature by about five to 10 degrees on average because I want it, the, the magazine for one is a lot smaller. It has a lot smaller features that you really need to cling on to. So when you get that plastic a little warmer, it'll seep down into those grooves a little better and help you with holding in that mag and keeping it on your waistline so that way if you bend over, jump up and down, do your somersaults with your concealed carry on, it won't go anywhere. I know I want my magazine to sit like this. So this side is gonna go into the seam because it'll be connecting on this side to the pistol, right? So, here we go. I want that chewed up edge facing down because it'll be pushed away. And you're gonna wanna meet up the two corners here and really, really get it down into the seam and stretch it a little bit while you still have it in your hand. Make sure it doesn't move when you put it in like that. And compress. It's important to do that quick because every second that you have it out of the oven, it's losing heat. And you're gonna want as much heat to help it mold down into the magazine as possible. So it's, that's why you always gotta do it quick. So right off the bat, um, I'm noticing right here where the two materials have kind of split. And that's not what you want. Uh, we're gonna have to retry this one because from the looks of it, you're not gonna have it like, on this side, you have enough material to screw onto and run your paracord through. But on this side, since it shifted, we do not have enough room. So we're gonna have to retry this one. All right, y'all, this is our second attempt at it. Um, I took the route of, I can't mess it up if I just throw more plastic at it. So on this one, you'll see a very large amount of plastic. You don't need to use this much. I just did it so we know it's gonna be right. So we go ahead and open this up for y'all. We're gonna take a look. See what's good and see what's bad. Let's see if we nailed it on the second try or not. All right. So what am I seeing right off the bat? Plenty of material to work with on both sides. Again, you can see that it came off again where there's that little bit of uh, slipping going on. And even at the top, it's not quite aligned. We can fix that in the post-processing when we start sanding and cutting and all that. That's nothing to worry about. I know that when I make these holsters, I like to be able to get a full grip on the pistol while it's still in the holster. So what that means is I'm gonna be taking away everything that is behind the trigger guard. Um, so I'll be taking this line here, leaving the mag release in this is the mag release here. So that way you don't accidentally eject your mags while they're in your belt. We're gonna use this as a modified sweat guard and a guide for this, so that'll stay. Around the mag uh, release, come down to the trigger guard. And right there when we get to the corner of the trigger guard where you can comfortably fit your finger behind it, we'll just make a little swoop. And this line will probably be adjusted once we get outside. Um, this swoop right here, it might get adjusted up or down or anything like that. Uh, right here, I'm just using a chalk marker, and this makes it to where I can make these marks, see them on the Kydex, but if I don't like it, just wipe it away and it's gone, but it won't smear when I touch it with dry hands. You always wanna keep everything straight to your gun, cause that, that's gonna be the straightest thing out of all of this. So here's your barrel line, you want your, I'm gonna cut it right here to keep this parallel to the barrel line and that'll expose the end of the barrel so that way water doesn't get trapped in there and stuff like that. So I'm gonna bring this over, try to keep it as parallel as possible. It will not be perfect and that is fine. It's just part of the adventure. Bring it over. There'll be a line. 
And then I'm leaving this here for now. So I have I give myself as much room to work with as I can. Um, I'm gonna be adding a retention pin here. In case it needs to be tighter or looser, there'll be a pin there so we can tighten it down, loosen it up, and that'll adjust the pistol for us in case we want a smoother draw. Uh, over here on the magazine, um, I'm also gonna be leaving all of this, but the problem is, like we were talking about earlier, is there's a lot of mismatched plastic. So I'm gonna have to square it up as soon as I get out there and then we'll start working with it. Um, but I'm leaving this as it is now. Um, I put in two retention pins and I adjusted my lines a little bit to where I think it'll work out better for the overall, uh, the mold. I cannot recommend this highly enough is get yourself a Dremel with a little kit of tools. In here, the things that I use in here are, I have a cutoff wheel, I have a sanding wheel, and I have a, um, a diamond tip like ball sander basically. It helps clean things up a little bit and get in those tight spaces. Where it's uh, a required item you have to have is a drill. And on here I actually have, I think this is the 716, or no, I'm sorry. I think this is the 316 spits. Um, and that's just so what so happens to work with my machine bolts, but this is just gonna be whatever size you're gonna be putting through there. It could be eyelets, it could be with the machine bolts, anything. These are, uh, these are I believe these are called Brad Point drill bits. Um, the reason they're special is because right in the middle of the drill bit, I don't know if you can really see that that well, there's actually a little point. And what that helps do is it helps you sink the drill bit exactly in the middle of the hole that you want and it, it'll keep the, the drill bit from walking around. So right there you can see I've got the center of the drill bit right in the middle of my circle. It's right where I want it and now when I start it didn't walk around at all. And just like that my hole is right where I want it. So I highly recommend using these types of drill bits. So now that we have all the edges uh, with, with the big chunks cut off uh, now it's going to come down to fine detail work here. So with the combination, I chased out my tool from the cutting wheel to the sanding wheel on my Dremel. And I'm also going to be using this, uh, this sander right here, it's just a regular little block sander. Um, and then I'll just be using those to clean up the edges as best I can. Uh, personally, I like my holsters a little more curvy. I think they look better. Um, this is your point where you can take whatever inspiration you have and apply it to your holster to make it look as good as you want. <laughs> All right, we're back inside from outside now. We finished up all of the sanding. We finished up all the cuts. Uh, we went ahead and drilled the holes for all the machine screws, as well as the uh, the holes for the parrot or the shock cord to run through to uh, put these two together. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you all how I tie these together with the paracord, just like I did in this one. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead put on the hardware and then we'll slide in the gun and the magazine, we'll try it on, make sure everything fits. So on this holster, it has six holes and I started in the back and worked my way forward with the cross hatching, but on this one it only has five, so I'm gonna start in the front and go back. So right here, I've got a, maybe a little over a foot of bungee that I've already cut and burnt the ends of, um, so we're gonna go ahead and start. So just like this, I'm putting my right hand through the right hole and my left hand through the left hole, just like a U, and pulling the slack through. Just like that. Now on the back side, I'm gonna take the string in my right hand, I'm gonna cross it over to the, the left hole, right above the one we just went through. I'm gonna pull the slack through. Now, I'm gonna take the string in my left hand, do the exact same thing, but on the right side. And just like that, it's bungee together. It's got a couple little cross hatchings in the front and a nice little bar at the bottom. So you can adjust these however you'd like. I'm happy with it, so I'm gonna leave it just as is. Right there, you can see how much extra I have. I'm gonna use that extra to go ahead and thread on my cord lock. These are called cord locks. You can order them on Amazon. I got a huge pack of them. Just like that, like 10, six bucks, six to 10 dollars on eBay, or uh, Amazon rather, quick and easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread these shock cords through. 
I'm going to tighten it down the best it needs to go. I'm going to grab a box cutter and I'm going to cut these cords. You are going to want to leave just a little bit of slack so that way you can get a lighter after it and uh, burn up those ends. Just like that. So now that I have the two strings hanging there, I'm just going to leave them as is because I think they're a good length. And I'm going to crisp up the ends of them to clean it up a little bit. And just like that, your holster is now bungeed together. This will make uh, some of the hardware uh, a little easier to put on. So up first, what we're going to do is we're going to put on our belt clips. Um, we're, what we're going to do is on this left side, we're going to have to put in a, a spacer. Uh, completely optional. I'm just using these little rubber washers. Um, I, I picked these up in the plumbing section of Home Depot, so uh, no secrets there. <laughs> uh, and we're also going to be putting in the, uh, the, the claw here. Um, so with the claw, I'm going to go ahead and put that in first, actually, because that one's real quick, easy and simple. These bolts that I'm using, they're different lengths. That's why I'm looking at them. Um, this is one of my shorter ones because of the height that I printed this at. So no biggie. Drop in my machine bolt. Grab my screwdriver. All right, so now that I have the claw in right here, I'm going to go ahead and put down my second set of machine bolts. They're just going to, I'm trying to keep everything uniform here so all of the button backs are on the back and all the screw heads are in the front. Alright, just like that, right side's complete. Alright, I'm going to go over to the left side now. And on the left side here, I'm actually including... Um, a rubber washer to space it out over top of one of my fastening bolts. Um, that'll just help keep the clip from laying right on top of it and just give it a little bit of space. Uh, I find that usually works best. So. And just like that, we have a final product here. Um, an important step before you start putting your pistol and your magazine in here um, you don't want to scratch up your gun or your magazine or get any gunk caught into either of them. So when I came in from outside and finished sanding, I took apart and I washed inside both of these the best I could. I cleaned up any burr edges and that's just going to help uh, conserve your pistol and your magazine. So with all that being said and done and everything being assembled, it's time for a final fit. So here I had the P365 again, verified that the chamber is empty. We're gonna see how it fits. That feels pretty good to me. I think that works outstanding. Now for the magazine. I don't hear any jiggle with it, that's good. We're gonna turn it upside down. No movement, that's perfect, that's exactly what you want. The three layers of tape helps with this. It helps secure the magazine a little bit for a better friction fit. The five layers helps with this. Remember when we did the tapes, it'll help secure your slide a little better, but still keep it nice and free so you can still pull it out. That passes the, the upside down test, I believe. So sounds like it's time for a fit. All right. Not near as bad as I thought. So I have both of my belt loops in, clipped in fully. You can see there. I still have access to my pistol. All right. I can still put it away. I still have access to my magazine. I can put that away. And the claw is doing its job by pushing my belt forward and pushing the gun into my stomach. So when I have the weapon away, 
It's virtually un unseeable. Oh, my belt buckle, this isn't the belt I usually carry with. So my belt buckle does protrude a little bit, but out in the public, you would not be able to see this. I can bend over, I can squat. Everything feels very natural. So I would call this a success. All right, guys, so that was a quick down and dirty class. Eli, I wanna thank you so much for coming over and showing us yeah. Really, if you want to, you can customize your own concealed carry holster. Now, this is the holster that Eli came in with, and this holds his Glock 43 with an extra magazine. It's got enough tension so it'll sit tight. I, I mean, it's actually, it's remarkable what you've been able to do with this. Now, this is the holster that he just made. And this is a holster that will hold a Sig Sauer P365. So he came in with one holster to hold a Glock 43. And you guys just saw him quickly make this for a P365. Now he has two concealed carry holsters for two completely separate weapons. Absolutely phenomenal. It's very well made, really sturdy. I mean, there's... There's a little give to it, but not a lot to it at all. Everything is extremely well made. I mean, if you were gonna buy something like this out in the open market, what what would this normally cost you? So I actually, I'm not that smart to make these kind of designs. I, I saw what a lot of companies were doing, and that's when I, when I bought my pistol, I was trying to buy one of those. Uh, there's a lot of really big companies that do it, and one of the big ones was this one right here. This is what I based my design off of a lot. And this, this is a great looking holster, but what's not great about it is the price tag. Um, when I saw the $140 price tag, I, I figured, no thank you, um, I'm more of a do-it-myself type of person. Uh, and so I started looking into doing it on my own. Right. So this cost $140 to make. $140. Now, not counting labor and that kind of stuff, just for the materials that you purchased. So it was one sheet of Kydex, that covered this entire yep. unit. And then you 3D printed the clips the claw, and yep. the claw itself. And then you also purchased the spring cord yep. and the spring cord clip. Yep. So, and the, the spacer guns. washers and the machine screws. Everything that you see here, uh -huh. how much did that cost? So that's the beauty of 3D printing. Uh, plastic was like 15 cents a piece maybe uh, I, don't, I didn't even use an entire sheet of Kydex, so I, there's still more value in that sheet. Uh, and I got three of them for like 20 bucks. Uh, spring cord, I used about you know, 12 inches, a foot to 14 inches. I'd say all in all, this cost about, uh, about, about $6 to make myself. $6. $6.00. $6 as opposed <laughs> to the proposed $140. Yep, that's the one. All right, hold on. Let's figure that out. <laughs> How much did you actually save? So that's six dollars. So, so the cost of this was literally four point two percent of what that was. Yeah, six dollars as the opposed to a hundred and forty dollars. So, I don't know if you guys can see that. You probably can't. It's point zero four two eight five seven one four two nine. So if you do that as a percent, it's 4.2%. This literally costs 4.2% of what it was if you were going to purchase that outright. That is absolutely amazing. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I know. That's I, absolutely crazy. And I've, I've only, I'm still pretty new at this. I am by no means a professional. Uh, this is still a hobby for me. That's, that's the beauty of it. You know, everybody always says, oh, you can buy the product or you can make it yourself. And I've always found that I always like making things myself because while I might spend as on tools as much as I would for the product, I just made double the product, therefore it's half price. In my mind, uh, well, that's, that's how I look at this it. This is only limited customizable wise as to what your imagination is. Oh yeah. You could go as little or as big as you want to with this. Uh -huh. and, and I think and, this is the perfect example. You know, you have one of the small subcompact firearms and a pretty medium size. You can go all the way up and make it for your Python if you wanted to, you know. It's, so, it's really this cool. is also, this is an external carry holster that Eli made. Very well done, very durable. I mean, magazine holder, same thing. 
But one of the nifty things too, I don't know if you guys can see this. So I do not dip in any form or fashion, but Eli and a lot of his buddies do. Yeah. So one of the quick and easy ways that they can help themselves out is he made this dip can holder. I don't know if you guys can see that. He made that dip can holder out of the exact same way that he made this, and it holds a dip can perfectly in there. This is made for a right-handed draw. Yeah, yeah speed draw <laughs> if you need that. <laughs> so it's got a hole right here. You literally just pop it up like that, use your product, throw it back down in there, and you're ready to go. So, Eli, thank you so much for coming yeah. over. This was a real treat for me. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button it's free and it really helps our channel grow don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're up to date on all of our upcoming videos but thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you on the next one the sky's the limit as far as this goes. You oh, could yeah. do a single can holder. You could do a double can holder. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty much whatever it is that you wanted. That's just absolutely amazing. And the, the imagination and everything that you had to put into this is just remarkable.